imagine a scenario. You see a property online, floor to ceiling windows, incredible sunset views, and it's a block to the seawall. You call your realtor, you set up a showing. While you're driving to the property, you get butterflies in your stomach because it's a gorgeous day. You see everyone out on the beach just enjoying it, the gorgeous weather and you just imagine this being your life. You open up the front door and the sun instantly hits your face. It's so bright and airy, the smell of the ocean, you can hear the seagulls. You walk through, the kitchen is so laid out and the bathroom has tons of counter space. Ladies, you know what I mean. And you instantly know where you're gonna put your couch, your desk, and your dining table to maximize the views of the gorgeous sunset. Enough to say you are head over heels in love. You decide to put in an offer but you're not the only one. But you don't lose and you put together the most strategic offer and the offer gets accepted and your dream home is yours. Now let's fast forward six months. Your best friend just got engaged and is planning her bachelorette party and your stomach drops because you have no money. You just spent the last six months trying to financially get ahead because you used all of your savings on your down payment and your monthly expenses went up significantly. I don't have to go on for you to get where I'm going with this. There's a lot of emotions when it comes to buying a home. Some are amazing, some are stressful. So how do you handle this? Today, we're gonna chat about how I successfully ride that roller coaster of emotions with my clients. How to enjoy the process and not get swept up in the emotion of it and making a bad financial decision or give yourself an ulcer in the process. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is about real estate in Vancouver, subscribe below. Tap the bell for notifications to be the first to learn what's going on in the current market here in Vancouver. My name is Megan Becker, local realtor, EXP Realty. Myself and my team get calls every day from people looking to make this incredible city their home. So whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, give me a call, text, or email, and I'm excited to help you make smooth move to the best city in Canada. Now let's chat about emotions. <laughs> so the first thing that I do to help clients navigate this process successfully is in our introductory buyer consult meeting. And that is the first step, and I believe the most important step when it comes to creating a great shopping experience, setting expectations, understanding the market, me understanding my client's goals. So part of that meeting is really setting clear expectations of what the process looks like. Things are less stressful if we've talked about it proactively and we can strategically make a plan for it. So I wanna understand your goals. Are you a first time buyer? Are you upsizing? Are you downsizing? Are you looking for an investment property? I want to understand your why. I want to understand your lifestyle, what you're using this piece of real estate to try and help you achieve because that will help us navigate through the, through the process. Emotions are, can be different. Uh, if you're a first time buyer, I find lots of first time buyers, uh, they can be very stressed out because they've never gone through this process or they, it can be very exciting because it's a brand new process. I find downsizers. There's a lot of emotion in there because you've spent lots of times, a lot of years, you've built family memories in this home and now you're moving to something different. So there's the emotion of that, there's the emotion of change. And so how do we kind of compile this all together? And that's why I like to understand and get to know my clients so I can understand your dynamic so I can help you navigate the process successfully. My number one goal is not just to, you know, send you properties on the F MLS, draft up an offer and negotiate for you. I want to make this process as seamless and successful and strategic as possible. And so the more that I understand about you and your goals, the better I can to guide you and make it a, a seamless experience for you. So I want to understand your budget and your timelines and your desired features. And what I preface that with clients is I always say, we're never gonna find a perfect property. And depending on somebody's budget, we might, the goal might just be to get into the market. And so understanding what are your non-negotiables that you need to have in a property, but what are some of the areas that you're willing to sacrifice on? And understanding your goals will help me guide you to figure that out. I always say, we're never gonna find a 10 out of 10 property. But let's do our best to try and get a seven or an eight. And then we can, you know, maybe we have to paint. Maybe we have to, 
you know, just delay the gratification for a handful of years before we save up more money to get, you know, the next property, something like that. Especially when it comes to budget is setting realistic expectations on what is available in the market. So lots of times in that initial meeting, I'll take the client's budget and then I'll pull up the MLS and we'll start looking at properties. And there has been times where it's been a really big eye opener for clients. Well, uh, a handful of times it's like, oh shoot, I, um, I was expecting that I was going to get a little bit more for my dollar. Let's, you know, let's take a break and save more money for a down payment and postpone the buying process. That has happened often, or it's been an eye opener of like, okay, I guess I, you know, I got to choose between a location and size and finishes, year built, things like that, and figuring out which thing I'm going to sacrifice on there. But really the end goal of that meeting is for you as a, as my client to understand what are your, I would say your three non-negotiables in a property, because that way we can filter the non-negotiables. Okay. It has to have in-suite laundry. It has to be X number of minutes of a commute to your work destination. And it has to have at least two bedrooms, something like that. And then, you know, an updated kitchen might be a nice to have, or, you know, a, a big balcony might be a nice to have, or a view might be a nice to have. Really figuring out what's most important there so we can put that filter when we're actually viewing properties. Number two is balancing the emotional and the practical side of actually viewing properties. And this can be a very fun experience because who doesn't love walking through gorgeous homes, going to check out different properties, seeing how sellers have decorated and walking in there, imagining your life. Okay. Where would you put your furniture? Um, walking you know, to the property, like I described in the intro, you're driving there, you get a little bit of snippet of your lifestyle. You pass a couple cool coffee shops, people out enjoying the, the nature, things like that. And so how do we balance? that emotional and practical side, because both emotion and practicality are very, very important in your home buying decision here. So let's go back to that example in the intro. You're all in love with this property and it's purely based on emotion. So what should you do? Well, prior to that, if we're working together, we have sat down and we have figured out your budget. So we're looking at properties within your budget. That's number one. Number two, in that intro meeting, we've talked about the market. And so I've helped you understand the property price range that we're looking in. Is it a really competitive market? Is there a high likelihood that this property is going to go over list? Are we looking at properties that give you that little bit of a buffer? If your pre-approval is up to here and we're looking at properties here, we've got this little bit of room if we need to submit an offer over list. But if we're looking at properties right at your pre-approval and it's super competitive and we're going into multiples, that doesn't give us you know, any opportunity to submit a, a really good offer there. So that's one of the things that I want to prepare you for in that meeting. So in that example, you fall in love with the property. My advice to my clients is yes, we want to put in an offer and likely we should do that very quickly. If you have these emotions that are driving you, that are help making you really kind of fall in lust, we'll call it that with the property, we want to submit an offer. So we're going to sit down, you and I, and we're going to strategically put that together. I always say an offer is just a step. If, especially if we have an off, uh, if we have an offer with subjects, it's just a baby step in order to get you to that, to that end goal. So we want to strategically put that offer together, but in that meeting that you and I are going to have, while we're putting that offer together, we're going to talk about the practical side of this property. We're going to look at comparable properties. We're going to see what other properties are selling for. We're going to make sure lots of times I like to be in really good con uh, connection with my clients, mortgage brokers. And so lots of times we'll run numbers and see, okay, yes, you're pre-proved for this, but this is what the monthly payments could look like on this property. Are you going to be happy with that six months from now? Because that's really what you want to understand is it's great that you're pre-approved for it, but are you going to be happy? with those monthly payments, especially if you are, um, if you're upsizing your utilities, your expenses are going to go up. Obviously your mortgage is, is likely going to go up as well. 
So yeah, it's great that you have a higher income and you're approved for a higher mortgage, but are you going to be happy and you know still live the life that you want with that higher monthly mortgage expense? Because we've all heard it. Nobody wants to be house poor. Nobody wants this amazing dream house, but you know you can't afford groceries. You can't go to your friend's bachelorette party. You can't do the lifestyle things that you really enjoy doing. You can't buy the paddleboard now that you live a block away from the beach. Nobody wants that. And then the other part of that meeting is checking the box, making sure that this home has those three non-negotiables. And that's where I'm gonna come in and I'll, I'll balance that emotional high you have and we'll, we'll talk about it. Cause that's again, why it's so important for me to understand your goals and your lifestyle and what you want this property for is I'll make sure again, I'll balance that practicality side of this property here for you. Number three is dealing with rejection. Yeah, it sucks when you get rejected in a lot of things in life. Nobody likes that feeling. <laughs> oh my God. But it's very common, especially in a competitive market. You know, you, you've you got this emotional high, you fall in love with this property, you go through the st strategic process of putting together an offer, you know, evaluating your budget, your lifestyle, like does it meet all of your needs? emotionally invest into into this process you put in the offer and the seller might reject it that is a tough feeling because you go from this like emotional high to now all of a sudden you don't get what you want and it sucks it sucks in a lot of things in life and again i want to be that reason of logic when my clients are at these emotional highs and emotional lows and so i get it sometimes i've I've called clients and I, you know, the non-fun part of my job is when I have to deliver that bad news. And lots of times I've said, you know, unfortunately the seller has rejected it. You know, take the time. You know that you guys really had your heart set on this, but if you need some time, let's, you know, take that. Let's talk in an hour. Let's jump back on the phone and talk about a strategy in order to move forward. And I always come to those conversations with, with solutions of how we're going to best move forward. Some clients like having a little bit of time to just feel sad. Some are like, okay, I'm mad, but let's, let's, you know, talk about this and move forward. And that, that's why, you know, me just really understanding my clients and understanding what they need. So I can, you know, if you want that space, I can give it to you. Uh, if you just like, okay, this sucks, but you know, let's move forward. I'm you know, happy to kind of dance along with you and whatever, whatever fits your style of, of dealing with that. And I find that as soon as we can focus on the next step, that's what helps us get over that like really emotional low. Number four is dealing with the, there's always something better syndrome. I don't know if you have felt this or heard of this, but it's something I've talked with clients a lot. And this applies to house shopping, that feeling of like, ooh, I, what if another property comes up that I really like? apply this to dating who I'm scared to commit because somebody more attractive or maybe better suited for me might come along later. So I'm scared to commit to this relationship that is already good, or maybe it's a job opportunity. I'm scared to commit to this job, move across the country. Like what if something better comes along? There's always going to be those feelings in life. And so what do I do to manage that? Because I've felt that in my own life. And so how do I help my clients navigate that? Number one, it goes back to those non-negotiables in a property. Same thing with dating, same thing in a job. Figure out the non-negotiables that you're looking for and have that written down and under and be able to filter out every single property. Does it, does it check those boxes? You know, does it have some of the nice to haves? The nice to haves, you know? the more of those it has, the better. But as long as it has those, those non-negotiables, that's what we really want to evaluate it by. Then the second part is understanding that as human beings, we never get to 100% certainty in life. You're never gonna be 100% sure that you're making the right decision. You're never gonna be 100% sure that this is the right property for you or that this is the right boyfriend or girlfriend for you. You have to make those steps and move forward based on the amount of knowledge that you have. And sometimes, you know, making a decision with 70 or 80% of information needs to be enough. Otherwise, and I'm sure that I've experienced this in my life, maybe you have as well, 
that we try and wait for 100% certainty and we never make a decision. And then we just were too scared to act. And so I think trusting your gut, but also having the practical side of having those non-negotiables written out is really going to help you make a decision when you're not 100% sure. And a lot of it is, it's trusting your gut. It's, does this feel like home to you? Just a simple question like that. And then the last part of it is asking yourself, what would this look like in my life? Can I imagine myself coming home here? Can I imagine myself creating a life, making, do I love cooking, making dinners in this kitchen, uh, walking to work, walking to coffees, enjoying relaxing on my balcony? And what would the financial part look like in my life? That's a big thing to consider as well. And if you filter it out through that, I think you'll have a lot more confidence in making a decision, even if there's that you know, voice in the back of your mind, like, ooh, there might be something better. I think the success comes from knowing that you can make any situation work as long as it checks those boxes. And then number five is overcoming that fear of paying too much. You know, the whole buyer's regret. You walk into that store in the mall and you see these jeans on the model and they like hug her in all the right places. So you try them on and they hug you all in the right places. And the salesperson says, oh, you look so good. And then you look at the price tag and you're like, shoot, I don't think my bank account thinks that that looks really good. But you buy it anyways because of how good the jeans look. And then you get home and then you get your credit card statement. Oh, and then you get that pit in your stomach of like, no, I look good, but did I really need to spend $300 on these pants? Nobody likes that feeling of the buyer's remorse there. So how do you prevent that when it comes to likely the largest financial decision in your life? The first thing again goes to getting your finances in order, understanding your budget, understanding your pre-approval, where your down payment is coming from and what your monthly expenses. The next part is knowing that this property is an investment into your financial future, but even more so, it's an investment into your lifestyle. Whether it's creating memories as a family, whether it's the next step in your financial journey, whether it's a huge milestone like you purchasing your first property or you and your partner, your first purchase together, whatever that is, it's an investment into your life and ability to create roots, to start, start building equity and build a life and build a home that you are happy in. And that about wraps it up. I'm curious for those that made it this far, I would love for you to put it in the comments how have you handled the emotional roller coaster of making a huge financial decision? What are some kind of like life principles that you've applied or that you've used to help you navigate this and really create some clear clarity around a very emotional decision making process? I'd love for you to share it. And please teach me. I love learning from other people and I think all of us can teach all of us something else. So I'd love for you to put it in the comments. And until next time, my name is Megan Becker, local realtor here. I would love, love, love the opportunity to chat about helping you make a smooth move to the best city in Canada. All my info is in the description box below. And until next time, I'm gonna head outside and grab a coffee, meet a friend, and we're gonna go take a walk on the sea well because it is nice and sunny out.